What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Find out the answer today. Right here on Kids Town Online. Hey kids, welcome to another awesome episode of Kids Town Online. Last week we started a new series on the Holy Spirit. We sure did. We talked about who the Holy Spirit is. We said that He was part of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost and changed the world forever. Now that we know who the Holy Spirit is, we are ready to move on to the next question. Today, we'll talk about what the purpose of the Holy Spirit is. Did you know that the Holy Spirit can help you in your everyday life by convicting, by teaching, by guiding, by empowering you, and to help you to pray? Well, Pastor Ed will be joining us again with some more really cool ways of teaching us all about the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Right now, let's dive into worshiping our wonderful God. Stand up and sing with us. Show me how to 
the splendor of the king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice let all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great
VBS. Instead of bringing your kids to VBS, let's bring VBS to your kids. But we're not finished yet. Help kids understand what it means to listen to, focus on, and follow Jesus. A stands for adult. Bible stories. They were afraid that they were about to become fish food. Games. Do you understand the rules? Yes, ma'am! Origami crafts. Now the first half of the flower complete. Powerful teaching. Proverbs 3. Great music. I'm a, I'm a wave rocker. Get ready for Bolt VBS. What is the for Bolt VBS online? All the details are at kistownet.com. Boop. Missionaries need us. Don't forget to fill up your BGMC barrels. Bring your BGMC offering to church. Place it in the yellow bucket. Our missionaries need us. Hey kids, I want you to make sure that you're filling up your BGMC barrels and boxes and bringing them to church every week during the month of June. We have a special table set up at the entrance where you will see the big yellow buckets to put your offering in. Now, I recently had a meeting with the head of BGMC for the entire nation, and he shared with me some extremely important and critical needs that our missionaries have right now. And I'm not able or at liberty to publicly say exactly what these are, but all I can tell you is when I heard about them, it brought tears to my eyes. These are extra critical and much bigger needs than normal because of COVID-19. So I just want to challenge you to do something creative and somehow earn extra money and give to our missionaries. We will soon be announcing a big BGMC fundraiser for this, but in the meantime, fill up your barrels and your banks and start bringing them in every single Sunday during the month of June. Together, we can make a difference in the lives of other children all around the world. Our missionaries need us! Hi gang, this is Buddy Barrel. People often ask me, why do we do what we do here at BGMC? Well, let me give you a simple answer. We do what we do because Jesus did it first. Jesus spent 33 years on this earth. In the Gospels, that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you can read about how he lived. If you follow his footsteps, you will see what was important to him, where he went, and how he spoke, and who he spent his time with teaches us about how we should act towards others. First off, Jesus loved everyone even those that no one else loved. Zacchaeus was a tax collector, and everyone hated tax collectors. Everyone was sure Jesus would yell at him about his bad behavior. But instead of shaming him, he went to be a guest in his home. Because Jesus showed him love, he repented, and he said he would never cheat people again. Jesus always had time for kids, even poor kids. There were people that didn't think he should show love to these poor kids, but Jesus didn't care. As he reached out to love them, he told them that he had come to give them eternal life. He offered himself to be their savior. Because he came to this earth to save them from their sins, he shared his story of salvation first. So now we can share that story with everyone we can. He did, so we do. If you keep following Jesus' footsteps, you will find that he cared about people's needs, physical needs, as well as their spiritual needs. He knew how important people's health was, and he healed many people. He even raised them back to life. So, because he healed people, we do our best to help people with their health. BGMC builds clinics, pays for medical supplies. Jesus cared about people's health, so we care about people's health too, and work to make them well. He did, so we do. Jesus not only cared about people's health, he cared about their physical needs. Many times when people were hungry, Jesus would perform a miracle to feed them. He cared whether people had enough to eat. 
So because Jesus cared about people having enough to eat, so do we. In countries all over the world, BGMC is helping people grow or buy food to stay healthy. Jesus did it, so we do it too. So why do we do what we do? He did it, so we do. BGMC wants to act like Jesus acted. When you put your money in your buddy barrels, you are doing what Jesus did. You are caring for people. When you help us, help them, your hands become Jesus' hands for this world. So keep on caring. Keep on putting money in your barrels so that together we can love people like he loved people. Remember, he did, so we do. We've got a battle to fight. God is on our side. We've got a world to reach. Your spirit lives in me. We've got a need to feel. We know it's your will for the world to see that you said. forget to fill your BGMC barrels. Bring your BGMC offering to church. Just as a quick review about what we talked about last week, here's a short clip that tells the story of how the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. Stories of the Bible. God sends the Holy Spirit. These are the apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on earth. Before Jesus went to heaven, he told them to stay in Jerusalem until God sent the gift he promised. See ya! So after Jesus went to heaven, the apostles stayed in Jerusalem along with the other people who believed in Jesus. One day they were all gathered together when there was a sound from heaven like a mighty windstorm. Whoa! Then what looked like flames appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in other languages, and so they started speaking. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, they came running to see what it was. What's going on? When they saw the believers speaking in their own languages, they were shocked and amazed. Hey, they wondered, how can this be? These people are from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages about the wonderful things God has done. What can this mean? Nah, whatever. But others in the crowd didn't believe that it was really a miracle and thought the believers were just acting oddly. Nah. Then Peter stepped forward and shouted to the crowd, Hey, all you! Listen carefully, all you! He told them that they were not acting strangely, but that this was from God. He reminded them that God said this would happen long ago. 
Then Peter told them about how Jesus was crucified, but then raised to life again, just as God had said he would be. He told them that Jesus was now in heaven and that God had given the Holy Spirit to them as he had promised. Peter's words changed what the people thought and felt, and they asked, Brothers, what should we do? Peter told them, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow! Peter continued to preach to the crowd for a long time, and those who believed what Peter said were baptized. 3,000 people were baptized and added to the church that day. Then all the believers listened to the apostles' teaching and practiced what they taught. Hey! They met together in fellowship, shared meals, and prayed together. They were amazed as the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Here you go. Take this. Ah, oh, thank you. They helped those in need. Here, this is for you. Thank you. Worshiped together at the temple every day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy all while praising God and enjoying each other. And each day, God added to their fellowship those who were being saved. It's time for today's power verse. Please sit up straight and say it with me. Here we go. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Acts 1.8. Let's say it again. Ready? But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And now, here are some of you saying today's verse. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. And in all Judea and Samaria. To the ends of the earth. Do you think dinosaurs live down there? One and eight. Look right here. One, two, three. Ah, it changed just like that. Today we're going to show you something from God's Word that can change your life. Are you ready? I'm Pastor Ed Corbin. You can call me Pastor Ed. I've been asked by your church and by people who love you to come and talk to you about Pentecost, about being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Are you ready? Here we go. Today, I want to talk to you about the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Last week, we said that the Holy Spirit was God, He was part of the Godhead, and that the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, and we said that the word Pentecost literally meant 50. Well, today I want to talk to you more about the Holy Spirit so you can come to know Him and, and understand how He wants to work and operate in your life, and so Today, I will talk to you about the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Are you ready? Here we go. One of the purposes of the Holy Spirit is represented by this right here. Well, if you were here, I would have you stand next to me, and I would drop this and open it up, and then I would ask you to crawl into it and it would look like a dress on you. It would be so long. I then begin to ask the boys and girls, oh, what do you think this looks like? And that's when they begin to shout out their answers, and finally somebody will probably say, well, it's, is that a prisoner outfit? Is that worn by someone who is in jail? 
I say, well, yeah, that is exactly what it represents. And then as we begin to look for another word that describes prisoner, another word for that would be convict. Ah, can you say that? Convict. If you are a convict, that means that you have been found guilty of a crime and you have been convicted of that crime. And so once you are placed in jail, from then on you are a convict. Well, let me lay this down for just a moment and pick up my very special Bible. I showed this to you last week. I'm going to open up my Bible now and turn to the book of John. You can do the very same. John chapter 16, verse number 8. Are you ready? Here's how it reads. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regards to sin. So here the Bible is talking about the Holy Spirit. Remember now, Bible words are true. Let's just say that together in case you've forgotten. Bible words are true. And the Bible, talking about the Holy Spirit, says the Holy Spirit will come to convict the world of guilt in regards to sin. So if the Holy Spirit convicts us, how is that? Well, have you ever done something wrong and you knew it was wrong without anybody telling you that it was wrong? Ah, you felt a little voice on the inside say, you shouldn't have done that, you shouldn't have said that, you shouldn't have gone there. When you hear that, that is God the Holy Spirit speaking to you. He is convicting you of the things that you are doing that are wrong. And so one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to convict us of our sin. And we thank God for that. We want Him to tell us when we're doing something wrong so that we can stop and we can begin to do it right. Isn't that true? Okay. And so one of the things the Holy Spirit does for us is He convicts us of our sin. Now, here is another purpose of the Holy Spirit. And with that, I'll pick up the other Bible that I said I would show you today. Notice this one also has a lot of beads on it. I'm very familiar with a boys program called Royal Rangers. I think Royal Rangers is the best boys program in all of the world. It is so much fun. And this program, Royal Rangers, is for boys and the men who lead them? Well, I have a Royal Ranger friend who does beadwork. He has a funny name. We call him Runnin' Dog. And Runnin' Dog made this beautiful beaded Bible cover for me. And there is somewhere over 30,000 beads on this cover. So when he made this cover for my Bible, he did it out of love. Running Dog loved me and he wanted to do me a favor. He wanted to give me something that I would always cherish, so he gave me this beautiful Bible. And you know, sometimes I open up the Bible and I read it and I come across a verse and I say to myself, man, I wish I knew what that meant. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever read a verse of Scripture and you wonder, what does that mean? And I wish I knew. Well, you can know. Because one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to teach us about the Word of God. So in John chapter 14 and verse 26, this is what it says. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said. Right there, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit will teach us. So when we read something and 
we just don't understand what it means and we're scratching our head and we're saying, oh, the Bible's too hard. I can't understand it. I'll never be able to understand it. No, stop and just say, Holy Spirit, please help me to understand the Word of God. And then an incredible thing begins to happen. Little by little, day by day, you begin to understand more and more about the scriptures so that when you read the scriptures they come to life and that when you read the scriptures you enjoy reading the scriptures it would be a terrible thing if you read the scriptures and you hated doing it if it was so boring you just thought oh i can't wait to be done i can't wait to be done no the holy spirit will change all of that for you helping you to understand helping you to enjoy so that you begin to love the Word of God. And one of the things that I'm going to encourage you to do is never let a day go by without reading the Word of God. I try to read my Bible all the way through every year. And so you need to read something from the Word of God every day. And if you're not big enough to read yet, well, then you have someone who's older read it to you so that you can begin to know and to live by the commandments of the Word of God. Well, that's two purposes of the Holy Spirit. He will convict us and He will teach us. Well, what else does the Holy Spirit do for us? Well, let me pick up this little item right here. If I were to open it up and take it out, oh, can you recognize it yet? What about if I open it up like this? Can you recognize it better? If I were to take the strap and put it over me like this, and then pick it up and look through, can you tell what these are? Ah, they're binoculars. Now, you don't know this about Pastor Ed, but for 23 years, I lived in South Africa. I was a missionary in South Africa. Well, there were times when I would go out to look at the animals, and there would be a person who would help me find the animals. Sometimes, he put on a hat like this. Do I look like I'm somewhere in Africa now? And he had in his hands a pair of binoculars and he would search the hillside for animals that could not be seen up close. He would often find animals for us to enjoy that I could not see. I tried and tried to see them, but I could not see them until he pointed them out. It was actually his job to drive us about the game park on a safari. Safari is a Swahili word that means journey. So we're on a safari hoping to take some photographs and this man would take us and help us to find animals so that we could enjoy looking at them and so that we could take photographs of them. Oh, I have been so close to big animals. Oh, it would shock you. I've been so close to elephants that they almost touched the vehicle that I was sitting in. I've been so close to Rhino that they have brushed the side of the vehicle. I've had some close calls with animals and maybe one day I'll tell you one of those stories. I've actually got one about a hippo and a life-threatening day and an encounter with a hippo. But that's a story for another time. This man that's helping me find the animals who is he? What is he called? Well, <laughs> that man is called a guide. And you know, the Holy Spirit wants to be our guide. If you look into John chapter 16 and verse number 13, you'll find this scripture. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. And so there it says the Holy Spirit will guide us. So he wants to be your guide. Oftentimes there are many pathways that we can take in life. 
We can go this way. We can go this way. God allows us to choose which way we will go. Well, the Holy Spirit wants to be our guide and help us to get on God's pathway for our life so that we don't get on the wrong roadway and get ourselves into trouble. We need to stay free of trouble and free of all the pain. And so the Holy Spirit wants to guide us. Walk here, go here, say this, act like this. When the Holy Spirit is guiding us, we can be safe and we can stay on God's roadway for our lives. And that's so very important. I'm going to share one more thing with you right now. Are you ready? Okay. I want to use this to help me describe what I want to talk about next. Well, it's big. Uh, it's, it's, it's puffy. Yes, it, it, it folds out. Oh my, it really is large. It's sort of quilted. It's got stitching in it and the places in between the stitching are very, very soft. Why, it is as big as a bed. Oh, well, I think this goes on a bed. Do you have one of these on your bed? It may be a different color, but do you have one of them on your bed? It's right on top of your sheet. You get under it at night and you snuggle into it and it makes you feel so comfortable and it keeps you warm and it, it makes you feel very much at peace. Do you know what this thing is called? <laughs> That's right. This is called a comforter. And so we like to put comforters on our beds. Some comforters are very pretty. So when we get out in the morning, all we have to do is pull up the comforter and the bed's made. You know, some comforters have designs on them and cartoons on them and you can decorate your room with one, but this one is plain white and it's so soft and it's so nice. And when I feel it against my skin, and when I snuggle under it, I am comforted. Have you ever needed to be comforted? Have you ever had a problem? Have you ever had something painful happen to you? And you've really needed someone just to comfort you so that you'll feel better? Well, the Holy Spirit wants to comfort us. If you'll look with me, into the scriptures one more time to John chapter 14 and verse number 16. It says this, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter to be with you forever. Oh my. So the Holy Spirit not only convicts us of sin and not only teaches us about scripture and not only guides us through life, but when things are happening that are out of control and we don't know how to deal with the painful things that happen in our life, the Holy Spirit is coming and he's wanting to comfort us. There's something about the comfort of the Holy Spirit that causes you just to slow down and relax and be at peace. Sometimes we're full of anxiety. Sometimes you get angry. Sometimes you shout. Sometimes you act like you should not act. God's probably not in that. But when God comes and he begins to work in you, he comforts you and you then are at peace because you know that everything is going to be okay. He makes you feel safe. And we need that. We need that feeling of safety. And so the Holy Spirit is your comforter. Right now, before I go, I'd like to pray for you. Once again, that you'll understand everything you're being taught so that as we progress through our teaching, 
we will come to the point where we pray the prayer and say, Holy Spirit, come in and baptize me and give me my prayer language. Help me to speak in other tongues. We've not talked about that today. I've talked about four other purposes of the Holy Spirit, but next time I will talk to you about how the Holy Spirit will give you your very own prayer language and you will speak with other tongues. But let me pray for you right now. I'm going to look into the camera. I'm going to look right at you and I'm going to pray for you. Heavenly Father, in Jesus name, I pray for my friend. May they be blessed. And right now, I pray the Holy Spirit will come and comfort them. I pray the Holy Spirit will calm them down. Give them peace. Give them an assurance that you're in control of their life and that you're taking care of them. In the name of Jesus, make yourself real so that they will receive you, so that they will be baptized in the Holy Spirit, so that they will receive their very own prayer language. Do that. In Jesus' name, I pray. And I thank you, Jesus. Amen. So until next time, bye-bye.
Thanks for joining us for another Kids Town Online. We hope you have a better understanding of the purpose of the Holy Spirit in our lives. He is always there to convict us, teach us, guide us, and comfort us. You know, next week, we're going to take a step further, and we're going to talk about how you can receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We'll talk about the steps that you need to take to receive this great gift through asking and praying. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is for everybody who loves Jesus. We'll even talk about how the Holy Spirit will speak out a special heavenly prayer language that God himself provides. It's going to be exciting. Don't forget to register right away for VBS. Your family can pick up a kit for VBS in the church foyer. Watch for the special table set up for VBS and a place to drop off your BGMC offerings and we'll be watching for you there. Also, make sure you connect this week with Rangers and Impact Girls on Wednesday and Thursdays. Before we go, let's say our power verse one more time. Are you ready? But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in the Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Acts 1.8. So go through your week in the power of the Holy Spirit, allowing Him to convict, teach, guide, and comfort you. We love you, and we'll see you again soon. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you.